Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. We're talking about the week of December 16th this time around. Still quite a bit of moon interference this week, but let's start in the evening sky. Uh, you go outside just after dark, and there's, there's Venus shining really brightly in the southwest. So Venus is big and bright and beautiful. It's the brightest object you're going to see out there unless you're looking at the moon. And so on the evening of the 19th, uh, that's Thursday evening, uh, the 19th, Venus will be, it's, it's working its way. Venus is in prograde motion, working its way easterly against the background of the stars in Capricornus. And on the evening of the 19th, Venus is just about one and a half degrees below Theta Capricorni, uh, theta, the Theta star in Capricorn, uh, and, and that's a, a 4.1 magnitude star. So that's a star you can see. Uh, right there's quite a bit of moon interference. The moon's off to the west here, uh, but there's there's off to the east. Excuse me, uh, but there's quite a bit of moon interference, and so it makes it a little bit harder to see a fourth magnitude star. A pair of binoculars should be able to pull it out though, and so remember your fist, your finger held out at arm's length is about a degree, so it's about one and a half finger widths. Venus sits below Theta uh, Capricorni. If you go about three times that distance, go go from Venus to Theta. Uh, up about three times that distance more. You got two fine star clusters there. We've looked at these star clusters before, but this is an easy way to find them now. M72 is a globular star cluster. Remember, globular star clusters have a few hundred thousand, you know, 500,000 stars, uh, but they're pretty distant from us toward the center of the galaxy. They live in this halo around the center of the galaxy. In the disk of our spiral galaxy, we've got open star clusters, and M73 is right there too as an open star cluster, just a few hundred stars. And you can see those as individual dots of light in your telescope. So you've got a small telescope, you can go up and check that out. You might wait until a little bit later in the week as the moon gets further and further and further away, farther and farther away to make that work. Uh, three nights later, on the evening of the 22nd, you've got uh, Venus is sitting just half a degree uh, below Iota. Uh, star in Capricorn, a 4.3 magnitude star, all the same considerations we're talking about. By now the moon's moved uh, a little bit uh, farther away to the, to the east, and so it should be easier to see things in this region of the sky. Uh, Venus is headed in the direction of Saturn. Saturn's 25 degrees west, two and a half fist widths at arm's length, so you've got a, a nice bright dot that is Saturn. Not nearly as bright as Venus, not as bright as Mars, uh, but you've got Saturn that's there. Uh, you work your way along. Remember, you've got these if you can go Venus to Saturn to Mars, they make a sort of line in the sky because of the flattened disk of the solar system. And so you'll see uh, that 25 degrees, about two and a half fist widths off to the east to get to, to, to Saturn from Venus. But Saturn is headed in that direction in a hurry. As we've seen it clipped by two stars in Capricorn this week, bam, bam, as it's going by off to the east. And it's going to catch up. It's going to get out there right next to, to Saturn in January. The first week of January, the moon's right in there. You, it's going to just be beautiful. So we're going to start tracking Venus and, and Saturn and watch these things close on each other. And for the next month or six weeks, we can keep an eye on this as, as these two bright objects close on each other. Uh, okay, what else have we got out there? Uh, we've got... Uh, Mars has entered retrograde motion, so Mars is moving west against the background stars. We've been watching Mars. Castor and Pollux are the two bright twin stars, and then you've got Mars out here. And so Mars is closing back in on Castor and Pollux and Gemini. Uh, and what, a few weeks ago when we talked about the when Mars was still in prograde motion, moving easterly against the background stars, we said, hey, you got the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, you got Procyon up there, and Mars is almost in a straight line. As the week works on, as the week moves on this week, uh, Mars is going to work back toward uh, that straight line with Procyon and Sirius. So Procyon is this next big bright star down this direction. It's about two fist widths down. So you got Castor and Pollux, Mars, and you go two fist widths down to Procyon, and about two thirds of that distance, make a right triangle and two thirds of this distance down to M48, another fine open star cluster uh, for binoculars or small telescope in the constellation Hydra. Again, this is a this is a tough moon. The moon now on, on the 16th and the 17th, uh, the night evening of the 16th into the morning of the 17th, the moon is sitting right there below Pollux at 95% full. So we've got an almost full moon right in this region. It's going to be hard to see this object. Uh, wait three days or four days 
and, and watch Mars track back and, and make a straighter line with Procyon and Sirius. And then you'll be an easier time, have an easier time seeing M48, this open star cluster, as the moon scoots on out. Where the moon is scooting next is on the evening of the 17th into the morning of the 18th. Uh, this stuff's up pretty much all night right now, right? Um, the, the moon uh, is right on top of Mars. So the moon has gone from here over to Mars, and it's going to clip uh, Mars. It's down, the moon's now waned away to just about 90% full, and it passes, just grazes right over Mars. If you live far enough north, you can actually see the moon occult Mars. This isn't something that happens, so, so it doesn't happen all the time, because we talked about this last week, I think. Uh, we got this flattened disk that is the, the disk of the solar system, and it's not a perfectly it's not a perfectly flat plane because the planets have a tilt, an inclination in their orbit relative to the Earth's orbit around the sun. And so you see these things spread up and down a little bit. And the moon has a pretty good, you know, six six degree or so tilt to its orbit. And so it's it's uh, not always in the plane uh, with all of these other planets. So you don't see the moon. Uh, a cult. You don't see the moon pass in front of a bright planet terribly often. Uh, we were talking about this with a bright star uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and now we're talking about it with a bright planet. Mo the moon is going to just clip Mars for most of us. For those of us in the continental United States, remember I'm in the middle of the United States. Uh, we're not going to see. We're just. It's, we're going to see the moon just miss Mars. If you're far enough north, but that's pretty far north. Uh, way up in Canada, for those of us in North America or Alaska, uh, you would have a chance to see the moon uh, actually occult Mars and pass over the top of Mars. But as these things, as these tilts, you know, as, 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 the, as Mars gets into a different place of the moon, excuse me. So here's the Earth, and here's the moon in orbit around the Earth. So sometimes we're seeing it here, and sometimes we're seeing it here, and sometimes we're seeing it here, and here, and here. So we see it in different positions relative to the plane of the other orbits of the planets and so on. But next month, uh, we're still, the, Mars is still going to be close to the moon. And for those of us in the continental United States, uh, next month in mid-January, we'll talk about it then. Mars is actually going to get hit by the moon. The moon's going to go right over the top of it. So it's something. You know, we watch Venus closing on Saturn as we head into January for the rest of December. And as we watch this really close grazing of the moon and Mars this month, let's think about forward to next month when we're going to see uh, the moon hit Mars. Uh, for pe uh, people in Africa and people in North America and the continental United States, we'll be able to see that in January. A uh, couple of nights later, the 19th into the 20th, the moon will be down to about three quarters full and will be sliding by the bright star Regulus, uh, just barely above Regulus in the base of the sickle of Leo. So a chance to see uh, the bright star Leo. Uh, a couple of nights later, the 21st into the morning of the 22nd, uh, the moon will be uh, right on top of Zavi Java. And we've seen the Zavi Java is a star that gets uh, uh, pa objects passing close by it all the time. It's in the Y uh, asterism of Virgo. And so the y, asterism, the y asterism of Virgo looks like this. It's that star right there. Uh, further west from, the, from where I am in the continental United States, again, if you get out into the Pacific, the moon will actually cross over the top of Zavi Java. So we'll actually see it uh, blink Zavi Java out in a cult uh, there. So there are occultations that occur. None for me where I am right now in the week ahead. But there are a couple of them that are going to occur in uh, fun, fun times, watching the moon blink things out. So that's what we got. We've got the moon interacting with objects. We've got, uh, we've got Venus headed towards Saturn. Uh, we can use Mars but headed back toward Castor and Pollux and see it with Procyon and the bright star Sirius on down here. Some open star clusters and one globular star cluster to look at. And, and, and it should be a good week. Uh, so as always, everyone, thanks for watching. And we hope you have a good week of observing ahead.